everybody's sitting around looking at the crypto blockchain web 3.0 space and trying to say, hey, what are some of the next hot use cases that I can look for that people haven't really discovered yet? Okay, and that's what I want to talk about in this video today. One topic that has a lot of potential that you probably aren't thinking about right now and you wouldn't even know about it unless you've been in this space for a very long time, okay? So I want to talk about the day, today in this video as a blockchain developer works with technology on a daily basis about what this is and how it has potential for the future and why you should understand. So before we into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So what is this trend or this, you know, technology that I think has a lot of potential in the blockchain space that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know about unless you've been in the blockchain space for a long time, because this could make a comeback and actually be sticky for the future. Well, what are they? So they're token curated registries. All right. So you might be thinking like, hey, what is that? Why should I care? Well, this is an old idea that came out, you know, maybe in 2017, 2018, that never really got traction, but could gain traction in the future. And I'm explaining why in this video. Okay. So, you know, some ideas aren't always wrong. They're just early and token curated registries or TCRs could be an example of this. Of course, not always a guarantee, but I like to have these things in my radar that have potential upside because if these trends actually, you know, take hold, then it's always, you know, good to be the first person to know about them. So let's explain what they are. I'm going to pull up this blog post that actually came out in February of 2018. So this was basically right after the the massive cryptocurrency blow off top from 2017. This was the beginning of the, you know, multi-year bear market when everybody, you know, was trying to think about what can we use blockchain for? And that was the beginning when a lot of the ideas that we see now uh, were, you know, incubated and worked on for years before they really took off. And so this was an idea that came out of that time that could assume the spotlight at some point. So what is a token curator registry? So you can kind of think about it like Yelp on the blockchain, okay? But it could do a lot more than that. And I'm explain why as we look at the business models of Web 2.0 versus the business models of Web 3.0 and how token curated registries can fit into that. So let's just look at some of the uh, points in the blog post. I'll put a link to this down in the description below for full credit. So let's look at the problem. Online lists are everywhere. We use them every day to organize and rank information. Examples include lists of best restaurants, top universities, or even tokens. However, they have several inherent issues. This is the problems of Web 2.0. So list viewers and list members are forced to trust the list owners acting honestly. So if you're going to use Yelp, for example, you don't know what the incentives are. or Well, you can guess what the incentives are behind Yelp, but you don't know what happens behind the scenes about who actually makes the lists. You know, if, if these things are curated through advertising dollars, whatever. So centralized lists like Yelp can arbitrarily add or move list members. They can require payment from list members or, or their ranking methods can be gained. That's what I was just talking about. So censorship is a problem here. That's an inherent problem with centralized entities. And then decentralized lists, and maybe better said another way, is crowdsourced lists, promise to reflect the wisdom of the crowd, but they often fail, fall victim to spam, fraudulent voting, or social engineering. In order to maintain quality, they often appoint semi-centralized list moderators. So let's see how token curated registries or TCRs could fix this problem. So they do away with the need for a centralized list owner and instead create economic incentives for decentralized list creation. So lists are made up of entries that contain data. There's going to be anything you can think of, just like Yelp does, like the best restaurants, and then all the relevant data with that, you know, their address, the phone number, et cetera, et cetera, their menu. But then each list or registry has a native token that somebody can buy. And here's where the Web 3.0 part of it comes into play. The people who own the tokens are actually incentivized for making sure that the list is good, okay? So as a token holder, your incentive is to maintain a, a popular, high-quality list that attracts list applicants who want to add their data to your list. And so in order to apply that list, applicants buy the native tokens and place an application deposit. The token holders can challenge an application if they don't think it's good for the list. And then token holders can basically vote uh, to accept or reject the application. And if it's rejected, the deposit is forfeit. And if the application is accepted, the data is added to the list. And if there's a challenger, the deposit is forfeit and split between the applicant and the token holders who accepted it. And that's a high level overview of what token curated registries are. So let's talk about how this is a big shift from web 2.0 to web 3.0. Because at the end of the day, the business model of the web 2.0 is essentially, we're gonna get something away for free. And in return, we're getting information about you so that we can show you ads or sell information to people who want information about you. And it's you have no ownership over this as the user itself. So Web3 changed the business model this entirely, where now the users of the thing itself can have actual skin in the game and can actually have ownership over this. So in the case 
Uh, in this case, it's a token curator registry, so people can own the tokens that are responsible for curating the list, and the incentives completely flip-flop and change to where now the responsibility is not in the hands of a centralized entity to curate this list, but it's now in the hands of a decentralized community that holds these tokens that wants the information to be good and right, okay? So what are some potential applications of this? Well, we looked at the Yelp example. That's just a really simple use case that could be implemented here. Let's look at some other cases where this could be a Web 3.0 way of doing things. So you can think about this where you use a token community like this to create any list of um, valid information, okay? Because that's essentially what a TCR is. It's like, is this a good restaurant? Yes or no? Is this information good or valid? Well, the token holders are the ones that decide that. So this could be extended to anything where you have to determine whether uh, you know information is valid. So you could do that with fact checking. We see websites like Snopes right now that are you know independent fact checkers. So what if you applied this to a token community that was now a fact checker and there were new incentives to the token holders instead of some centralized entity where you get these kind of benefits? I realize that comes with its own set of problems, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But that's one potential use case. I mean, also think about it this way, like if you've ever seen like an infographic going around a line, that's like, here's all the news organizations out there and here's where they fall like on the political slant bias. Sometimes those like scatter plots aren't even close to accurate based on your viewpoint. And that, you know, chart in and of itself could be complete propaganda. So that would be a use case where you could have some sort of like token curated registry say, hmm, what is the actual bias in X news organization or this or that, right? I realize some of these things uh, can start to be somewhat of a gray area, which kind of leads me to my next point. So if TCRs were to take off and actually become a real thing, I don't think it would completely remove, um, you know, something that's happening already in Web 2.0. It's going to change how it works in Web 3.0, okay? So the whole thing, the whole issue here of certain viewpoints being skewed or whatever you already seen this Web 2.0, and that can still exist in Web 3.0. Or maybe you now have multiple different TCRs that all try to compete to say the same thing, but then they differ in their outcomes, and those outcomes typically reflect the nature of the token holders. You know, the world is kind of tribal. It's becoming more tribal. Crypto is even becoming that. And so there's nothing to stop like TCRs and this way of doing things from becoming tribal and kind of like an echo chamber. But you have this added benefit here of transparency into the process and seeing how it's done. So that's one thing about blockchain technology is at the end of the day, um, it, it may not fix every problem that we have in, with centralized services. In fact, I don't think it's going to, but you can have something that has a very similar type of thing, but has an added benefit, which is that transparency that I'm talking about. And so if you take that with the other inherent problems that we're seeing with like DAOs, where you know people with the most money can potentially game the system or scenarios where people can act dishonestly, even if it's on a blockchain, those problems don't always go away, but it's a lot easier to pinpoint to who is to blame and to actually sort of audit, you know, how the sausage is made, so to speak, rather than everything being behind a centralized black box where nobody knows what's happening here. And over time, if you see things actually gain a transparent reputation, they could become more trustworthy and a better way of doing things. All right, so now I want to talk about why this could potentially make a comeback now and you know why it may not have taken off in the first place. So like I was saying, some technology or some ideas aren't always wrong. Sometimes they're just early. And so now could be a much better time for something like token curated registries to actually take off. So why is that? Well, we have a lot more users now than we did in 2018 who are actually, you know, using blockchain wallets who are actually doing things on chain like trading NFTs, you know, swapping tokens on a DEX, participating in decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs. And now that you have all these users who are used to doing that and want to do more things on chain, you actually have a solid user base that could make this potentially sticky over time. And some of the lowest hanging fruit for TCRs is to actually, you know, create token curated registries of things that already exist on chain. So any application where you could see this you know, working with a DAO, with NFTs, with other existing cryptocurrencies would enhance the likelihood that this would actually be sticky. Now, another big reason that I think this could have a more sticky use case or be more sticky now than it was in 2018 is because of some of the attitudes that we're starting to see, you know, come out with regulators, okay? So last week on my channel, I talked about um, a report that came out uh, from European regulators and how they're thinking about regulations for cryptocurrencies themselves, the actual coins, okay? And it was basically saying that like overwhelmingly people want to regulate stable coins, but there are lots of other cryptocurrencies that fall sort of farther on this uh, side of the spectrum where they don't feel the need to impose regulations now. So examples are like non-fungible tokens or NFTs, but the other main one was like utility tokens. So cryptocurrencies where you can buy them and actually use them in an ecosystem that they have some real benefit that those are less likely candidates for regulations, okay? 
And so if you can have this use case of TCRs, then that's another way that you can launch a cryptocurrency potentially, all right, potentially, that is not you know, going to be in the crosshairs of regulators. And so there's going to be incentives for people to create these TCRs, to create assets that appreciate in value, that have utility in an ecosystem that may not get regulated. And so that's another reason why I think that it could be sticky now and actually take off. Because I think, you know, if we see that kind of attitude, more and more people are just going to say, I want to figure out how I can successfully launch a cryptocurrency. And if I can do one that has a utility, this could be some really, you know, easy, low hanging fruit to do that. All right, so that's an overview of what token QA registries are, TCRs. Again, this is an old idea that I think could come back around. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Is this a good idea? Do you see this taking off in the future? Do you think it's completely not going to work? I want to know your thoughts down below. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They like you to make courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, Maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely. I can show become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.